Hey guys, so today I wanted to take another look at Chrysler's 5.7 liter Hemi V8 engine. In the past couple of years, we looked at the major flaws and problems of both versions of the 5.7, including the 2003 to 2008 and the 2009 to present engines. For today, we are going to be comparing the two engines. So the first one many refer to as the pre-Eagle version and the second as the Eagle. And we'll look at all the specs and details and features that differ between the two. So this information could come in handy when purchasing a used vehicle or grabbing an older engine for your project. We'll start with an overview of the engine and then look at the differences of the various aspects of each, like the power output, block, exhaust manifolds, cylinder heads, the major problems, and that sort of thing. So let's begin. The second generation 426 Hemi V8 was last used in 1971 in a production vehicle, and it would be more than three decades until the third generation Hemi made its triumphant return. The newer Hemi engine heads were flatter and more complex than the older Hemis, and the combustion chambers are no longer truly hemispherical, but of course Chrysler wasn't going to lose the chance to bring back that legendary nameplate. Chrysler took the opportunity to show off the third gen Hemi on many of their concept vehicles in the early 2000s, with the first few being under the hood of the 2000 Chrysler 300C Hemi convertible concept and the 2001 Dodge Super 8 Hemi. As for the first Hemi, this engine was released for the 2003 model year on the Dodge Ram 1500, 2500, and 3500 pickup trucks to replace the 5.2 liter and 5.9 liter Magnum V8 engines. Different models followed, with the Hemi spreading across many vehicles, like the 2004 Dodge Durango, 2005 Chrysler 300C, Dodge Magnum RT, and Jeep Grand Cherokee, the 2006 Dodge Charger RT and Jeep Commander, and 2007 Chrysler Aspen. In all of those vehicles, the 5.7 was mated to either the Mercedes or the Chrysler 545 RFE 5-speed automatic. Some Ram Heavy Duty trucks with this Hemi were paired with a 5-speed NV4500 or 6-speed G56 transmission from Mercedes-Benz. However, all of the cars and SUVs had one of the 5-speed automatics. Power output was rated at 345 horsepower and 375 pound-feet of torque in the Ram trucks, 330 to 335 horsepower and 370 pound-feet of torque in the Jeeps, Durango, and Aspen, and 340 to 350 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque in the LX vehicles. The displacement is 345 cubic inches, so some also refer to it as the 345 Hemi. One important feature was what Chrysler called the multi-displacement system, or MDS, which first came out on the 2006 Hemis. This deactivates two cylinders in each bank, so four out of eight total, when the throttle is closed or at steady highway speeds and under light loads. And Chrysler claimed that it boosted fuel economy by 10 to 20%. This MDS system was never included if there was a manual transmission. So as for the Eagle Hemi, this engine was revised for the 2009 model year across the Chrysler lineup. The major upgrade was the introduction of what Chrysler called variable cam timing, VCT, which is essentially variable valve timing, or VVT. The cylinder heads were revised for more flow, with the code name Eagle, so that's what I'll refer to it sometimes during this video. We'll get into all the specifics soon, but the major revisions here included a new engine block, structural upgrades to the crankshaft, improved cylinder heads with better flowing intake ports, revised combustion chamber design for increased compression and improved valve spring design, aggressive camshaft profile, increased oil pump capacity, and more. Since 2009, this 5.7 Hemi has been found in the Dodge Charger and Challenger RT, Chrysler 300C and 300S, Ram 1500 and heavy duty trucks, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Dodge Durango, as well as the 2009 Chrysler Aspen, and the last few years of the Jeep Commander, and also more recently in the 2022 Jeep Wagoneer. The 5-speed automatics continued, but all would end up being replaced by the Torque Flight ZF 8-speed automatic transmission by 2015. Power output was rated at 390 to 395 horsepower and 407 to 410 pound-feet of torque in the Ram trucks, and 363 to 375 horsepower and 394 to 400 pound-feet of torque in the LX slash LD vehicles. 6-speed manual transmission vehicles and all the heavy-duty truck applications this time do not have the MDS system. And overall, the fuel economy increased by only 4% compared to the previous version. We can start right away with the camshafts since this was one of the major differences, as I mentioned with the addition of VCT. VCT uses an oil control valve that controls the oil flow to a unique camshaft sprocket that contains a phasing device, 
which can either advance or retard camshaft timing. This allowed Chrysler to advance the cam to increase the torque under light loads so that the engine could run on four cylinders at 70 miles per hour and stay in MDS up to 40% of the time, as well as eliminate the EGR valve on all the models other than the late 09 to 10 Aspen and Durangos. Unlike the original Hemi, the VCT engines had five different camshaft profiles, each with a unique cam that was not interchangeable with each other. The different cams included one for the Ram 1500 pickups, as well as the 2009 Aspen and 2009 10 Durangos, one for the Ram Heavy Duty 2500 and 3500 trucks, one for all the cars and SUVs with automatic transmissions, including the Charger, Challenger, Durango, and Grand Cherokee, and one for the Challengers that have a manual transmission as there was no MDS, so the cam was revised. The final profile was built in limited numbers, roughly around 800 units for the 2009 Chrysler Aspen and Dodge Durango hybrids before they were discontinued. The intake manifold was changed, this time model-specific. The Dodge Rams and 2009-10 Aspens and Durangos used an active intake manifold with a short runner valve to optimize torque and horsepower. So at lower engine RPM, the valve is closed, resulting in an improved low-end torque from the longer runners. At a higher engine RPM, activated at 4,000 RPM, the valve is opened, diverting the incoming air into the center of the manifold, creating an intake path that's half as long. So the shorter runners result in an extra 25 horsepower. All the passenger vehicles, Jeeps, and hybrid Aspen and Durango use a passive intake manifold that doesn't have a short runner valve. The camshafts we talked about are designed to work specifically with the active intake or not. Now we'll go back and forth with the pre-Eagle and Eagle Hemis, taking a look at the engine blocks, cylinder heads, rotating assembly, and major flaws. So starting with the engine blocks, on the pre-Eagle there is 5.7 cast on the driver's side of the block above the oil pan rail, and these are painted black. Like the original 426 Hemi, all the 5.7 blocks are cross-bolted. Chrysler knew that many would want these Hemis for their old-school Mopars, so all Gen 3 Hemi engines share the same bell housing bolt pattern of the Chrysler LA or Magnum style small blocks, including the 273, 318, 340, and 360. That allows for interchangeability, meaning that any of the torque flight transmissions can bolt up to the engine, old or new, and many manual transmissions can work as well. This block can be safely bored to 0.03 inches oversized when rebuilding, and the production crankshaft is made from cast nodular iron. The stroke is 3.58 inches, and the bore diameter is 3.92 inches. The Eagle blocks still have the 5.7 liter cast on the driver's side and are painted black. These new blocks can be identified with different casting numbers, and they have a large round hole for the variable camshaft timing that's located on the front face of the block above the camshaft bearing journal. The VCT required three additional oil passages and an extended front cam bearing that allows an oil supply to the cam phaser through the front journal. This Hemi still has a cast iron crankshaft with a 3.58 inch stroke, but Chrysler claims that it's a stronger design. Another difference was the length of the crankshaft snout, as it was extended by 0.46 inches so that the crank gear lined up with the cam gear. Now we can move on to the cylinder heads. The Gen 3 Hemi engine cylinder heads are cast aluminum with a twin plug design for better efficiency. The exhaust port is square with 50 cubic centimeters of volume and the exhaust valve diameter is 1.55 inches. The intake port is square with 161 cc of intake runner volume and a 2 inch intake valve diameter. Overall combustion chamber volume is 85 cc using a 9.6 to 1 compression ratio. Motor Trend published an article where Dave Weber at Modern Muscle Performance did some flow testing with both sets of cylinder heads, the Pre-Eagle and the Eagle, and they found that at 0.5 inches of lift, there was 284 CFM, or cubic feet of air, moved per minute from the intake port, and 183 CFM from the exhaust port. One of the biggest changes in the 2009 and up Hemi engines was the updated and revised cylinder heads, so much so that this engine is often called Eagle, because that was the code name for those cylinder heads. These are still cast aluminum, but they had some major changes for better airflow. First, they have a 65cc oval closed chamber instead of the 85cc hemi chamber on the previous heads, so the compression ratio was increased from 9.6 to 1 to 10.5 to 1. As Chrysler said, quote, to improve the combustion process and therefore efficiency, end quote. The new intake ports are still square, but the intake runner volume is up to 185cc, up 14.9% from the other heads. The intake valves used are also slightly bigger up to 2.05 inch instead of 2 inches. The exhaust ports are now D-shaped and they have a volume of 56cc, so that's up 12% with 
but the same 1.55 inch exhaust valves are still used. However, both the valve stems are a bit longer as the rocker pedestals were moved up higher on the head to make room for the new exhaust ports. All those differences result in some big flow improvements right out of the box. At 0.5 inches of lift, the intake ports flow 323 CFM, which is 13.7% more than the original heads, and the exhaust flow is around the same at 181 CFM. As for some other rotating assembly parts, we can lump both engines together since there aren't too many changes here. The connecting rods are made from powdered metal and measure 6.242 inches. On the Eagle Hemis, the rod cap is stiffer, and they are supposedly redesigned to be stronger than the originals due to the increase in horsepower. All 5.7 liter Hemi V8 engines use a hyper eutectic aluminum alloy piston with pressed pins. The original piston was modified to accommodate a new narrow ring pack, but otherwise the exact same pistons are used. Due to the extra lift on the VCT cams, the lifters were changed slightly to accommodate for that, so the earlier lifters won't work in the newer engines. These can be identified with a chamfered edge. Both versions have a cast iron crankshaft with a 3.58 inch stroke, but Chrysler claims that it's a stronger design. The 5.7 liter Hemi V8 does share the same stroke as the 6.1 liter Hemi V8, but the cranks are not interchangeable between the variable and non-variable timing engines. The original Gen 3 motor had a 32 tooth crank sensor wheel, but they stepped it up to a 58 tooth sensor wheel on the new motor because the computer, quote, needed more immediate and accurate information on the position of the crankshaft during rotation, end quote. So that means it could control and coordinate MDS and the VCT along with direct ignition and all of the other electronics that are used on this engine. Now we'll look at some other random specs and info about these Hemis. Both have the same firing order and both use an 80 mm throttle body. The fuel injector flow differs as the original motor was 26 pounds per hour at 58 psi, while the Eagle motor went up to 28 pounds per hour at 58 psi for trucks and 35 pounds per hour at the same pressure for cars. Another change is that the oil pump on the Eagle Hemi has a higher displacement of about 22% more oil. The final difference would be the weight of the engines. The Eagle is some 31 pounds heavier, 591 pounds, versus the original at 560. Now I want to briefly talk about the major flaw that each engine has. I did make an entire video for each, talking more about why these issues happen and how to prevent them. So if you want more information, make sure to watch those. The links will be in the description. On the earlier 2003-08 Hemis, they have the issue of premature dropped valve seats. The valve seats fall out of the head and cause damage to the engine. In the head of the intake valve, there is a ring, which is called a valve seat. The intake valve closes up against the metal ring. This is made of a different material steel rather than the aluminum head, which is stronger. So when the parts get hot, the aluminum head and the valve seat metal expand, but at different rates, so the valve seat can fall out of the head. This was a design flaw that Chrysler fixed for the newer Hemis, and it doesn't happen anymore at the same frequency. There's a whole lot of different rumors around what the exact root cause is. Some say due to the engine overheating, some say from revving too high, and some say from the MDS. The most common reason that people believe it happens is simply overheating. Basically, when you shut off the engine when it's too hot, you get a heat spike or a heat soak, and the temperatures rise after shutdown, and the head temperatures are not even, and a valve seat could drop. When it does happen, it causes some pretty significant damage to the engine as the valve seat cracks into different pieces, which then get pressed into the piston, pound into the cylinder heads, and even can transfer to other cylinders. If it happens, you're looking at a lot of new parts, like cylinder heads and pistons and a machine block if the cylinder walls have been damaged. This usually happens after 100,000 miles and mostly seems to affect the cars and not the truck so much. As for the Eagle motor, it has a hemi tick, which would be intermittent lifter ticking noise that you hear once the engine has reached the ideal operating temperature. The general consensus will suggest that the roller bearings in the lifter roller fail, these are also called needle bearings, and that causes the roller to seize and end up sliding or tapping on the cam lobe rather than rolling as it should. Another way of saying it is that the lifters are faulty and can stick or get stuck, and that stuck lifter then wears down the camshaft lobes and eats into the cam. The lobes will get worn down far enough to the point that the valves don't open enough anymore and you'll get a cylinder misfire. If you have this issue, you'll require new lifters and a camshaft replacement. Another hefty and expensive job. This happens at an average of around 120,000 miles and affects any of the Hemi vehicles 2009 and up. There is a massive amount of debate online as to why this happens and I do go in depth in my Eagle Hemi flaw video on each potential cause. And one last flaw worth mentioning is another Hemi tick that's first noticeable on a cold start 
and usually goes away after a few minutes once the engine heats up. This would be an exhaust leak as the exhaust manifold bolts break, creating that leak. This issue affects both the pre-Eagle and Eagle Hemis and only the trucks and SUVs and seems to keep reoccurring even after fixing, but it's not something so detrimental like the other two flaws mentioned. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed going super in depth on both of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 motors. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content and I'll see you guys in the next video.